Welcome back, PC Amateur Guy. Um, I want to uh, build on the CH-170 today. And uh, just a couple of remarks first. What I really like about this case is, is it has good airflow. And it can fit a big graphics card uh, in it. So uh, let's get started. Okay, so it's upside down right now. Uh, this uh, USB is for the uh, uh, digital display for the CPU, GPU, and power supply. Uh, so that goes into your motherboard. Uh, but uh, in order to open this up, the first thing you want to do is uh, remove the four screws. There's four screws there. Uh, there, 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 there. And then it's kind of like a chain. So you just move the four screws and then you can move each piece thereafter but then there's going to be screws and screws on the way for each side uh, but the point is that you got to remove this bottom part first uh, and then uh, that's when you can build in it so I'm going to go ahead and do that right now okay so I removed the four screws uh, just note that these four screws are actually bigger than the other screws inside the for the side cases so that's how you distinguish them. Uh, make sure you obviously don't want to lose the screw uh, because it, it can get uh, kind of complicated. So just the once you remove those four screws, this just comes off like that. And then you have that, and then then you can move these other screws here uh, to remove this. This is this side, and then this will come off, and you can move this as well to remove the side this section here this will come off as well uh, so I'm gonna do that next so uh, you can see that this screw let me just put them side by side here uh, so it's a little bit it's smaller than the those four screws on the bottom there so just keep that in mind but all the other screws uh, for the side panels they're they're basically small so that's how you can distinguish them and you can keep them separate that way so so one of the cases are off. It's off now. Uh, you can move this screw here to remove this part. Once you do that, uh, you can take this and just note that all the front panel cables, including the to power on, is connected to this one item here, which is kind of cool. And you obviously have this for the power supply. And then uh, you can move these. This is where the uh, the IO2 240 can go. Uh, it also comes with screws and some zip ties. Uh, so I'm just going to start uh, moving all the side panels now. And then I'm going to install my motherboard there. And uh, that's uh, an X570 with the 3950X Ryzen and uh, 2080Ti, uh, which will actually, or worse, which is actually pretty big and it's, it can fit in here. So uh, I'm going to do that and also I'm going to install a 600 watt power supply by Corsair uh, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I removed most of the stuff and uh, just examining the case. Uh, you can't really like put any fans on this side or any of the other sides because there's no holes for them. Uh, you can put a fan in the bottom here as intake because this is the bottom of the case. So that's one. And you can put uh, another fan on top if you have the, the accessory that comes with it, uh, which is this, this piece here. So that's one, two. Then you can fit two fans using the side here, these side connectors, or if you use an AIO. Uh, so essentially, you can only use, you can only have four fans in this case. Uh, like someone correct me if I'm wrong, but according to the specs, you should be able to do two more rears and the uh, two more fans on the rear side. But I don't see. I don't see where you can actually even put fans unless you can connect it using this mesh. Um, let's see. Yeah, 
Yeah, it looks like you could fit fans using the mesh holes. Interesting. Uh, let me see if I can take this filter out. Okay, so I took out the filter and I line it up here. Uh, looks like Yeah, it actually looks like the holes you can actually fit the whole, the screws there. So you could put in fans here, but then you have to remove the filter because there's no way you can put the filter, otherwise you can't screw it on. So that's kind of cool. So you could do two fans easily. Um, that's cool. Uh, that being said, uh, if you look at the layout, on this case here um, so you can do two mirrors if you just take out the filter but this is where the graphics card is going to be and this will be like this so what I would do is put two fans rear as exhaust so the graphics card would be intake and it would just exhaust The um, yeah, we'll just pull in technically cool air and then pull out the hot air out the back, so that would be good. Uh, probably you can only put either on top, or I think you can actually you can put another so you can put another two fans on top there, so one in the top, one in the bottom. Uh, I don't think that's going to be a, a good idea. Uh, but I'll see how it goes. I'm just gonna start uh, just building now. The put in the power supply. Actually, I just put the motherboard first. It's just four screws. Uh, and uh, yeah, it just looks like that. Um, just want to note like the lower profile cooler you can put into this case. You can then put in two side fans it just maximizes the fan capability because the AO it's, it's kind of tight uh, so air cooling might be better uh, but to each their own uh, first honestly I think if, if you can do a 240 I think it would probably make more sense uh, because then you can put in a higher end high end uh, CPU but I'm just gonna try out the air cooling to be honest the instructions are not very clear somewhat uh, but if you're using the default case, you can just put it on the side like this and then you can just screw in one, two, three, four uh, And then you're done with the, the power supply if you're using the SFX uh, I probably would want to try to put in a ATX 140 centimeters in Length to see how it actually fits in this case, but uh, for now, I'm just going to use this So in case you didn't know you can just do that using the default case I think you have to play around with this attachment here in order to fit an ATX. But just to keep things simple, I'm just going to put this in there. Screw the four holes. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four, sorry. And then I should be good to go. Just screwing it in. Uh, I just recommend like just screwing it to 75%. So that way the you can maneuver the power supply a bit to line it. Uh, you don't want to like tighten it like 100% to each one. Then it's just going to be misaligned. You can't line it. And once it's 75% for all of them, then you can just do 100%. So just uh, just a tip there. Okay, so all four screws are in uh, 100% now. Uh, just do like, um, just do the hand tight. Uh, you don't need to like, just do really tight because then if you ever need to remove it after, it's just easier. You just, you just need to do the hand. Once you hit to the, like, you can't go anymore, I, that, that's where I would stop. Uh, you don't ever want to do too hand tight because you can strip the screw after when you try to take it out. And stuff so it's always good just to do like once you just reach the point where you just can't turn anymore physically then I wouldn't go any further well, uh, for the sake of this video I'm gonna try to make it sweet, short and sweet uh, so I'm just gonna plug in the power supply and the CPU power and then I'm gonna 
Plug in all these cables, install this, uh, and then after that, I'm just gonna put in the graphics card. Uh, you always wanna like plug in all the front panels and stuff, uh, USB 3.0, etc., etc., onto the motherboard before you install the graphics card because then it gets once the graphics card is in there, everything is really tight, and you can't sometimes you can't get your fingers in there. So it's always good to install these, the power of the front panel, the power supply cables, obviously. And then, then you install the graphics card, and then I'm just gonna put all the all the covers back, and I'm basically done. And then I'm gonna do a Cinebench and hopefully a, a GPU for mark test uh, to see uh, what are the results, and I'm gonna conclude with that. Okay, um, I'm just gonna probably extend the the case fans on a later date. Uh, so thanks thanks for watching. Uh, I'm gonna do that now. Another thing I want to mention, uh, this is a USB 3.0. Uh, let me just put this down for a second. USB 3.0, and this actually, when it when we upgraded from USB 3.0 from from 2.0, it actually created a lot of Wi-Fi interference. So if you want to, you know how sometimes when you're using your wireless keyboard and mouse and you're getting this like kind of like this. Uh, uh, you know this this like delayed feedback and it's like it's like the keyboard is like retarded and you're pushing buttons and it's not really working properly so there's a fix for that you can just buy this like extension this is usb 3.0 it connects to this and then you just use your usb 2.0 and then you won't you will remove the the keyboard uh wireless um interference uh so i have this i, I bought like six of these on amazon for like 20 bucks and I have this on all, like basically all my computers are, so this removes the Wi-Fi interference with your wireless keyboard and mouse. Obviously, if you're using a wired keyboard and mouse, you're not going to have this problem, but I want to share that tip. Okay, so that USB 2.0 and that front panel is already in. Now I'm going to install the, the graphics card. Okay, so here's my uh, 2080 Ti. Uh, this is actually, it's about 60 millimeters in width, and it's about... Uh, 300 centimeters in length but I want to mention that because this thing can fit up to 305 uh, millimeters and it can also fit up to 65 millimeters in width and it's a three slot uh, graphics card so it's one of the fewer smaller cases that can actually fit a huge massive card you can even put a 4090 founders edition in here uh, and I think that would be a great idea if you could fit in like an ATX uh, four, 140 centimeters um, power supply uh, and then you can actually put you can make this a high-end com uh, computer so this case is, is is really good and then that has the mesh here so this is gonna actually this is one of the most beautiful uh, 2080 Ti with RGB uh, so it's gonna really look really nice and then if you put two side fans in here and then even one on top uh, you can make and even two in the rear uh, you can actually make a really nice RGB kind of thing. Some of you guys either hate, like it or some of you guys hate it and I get it but you know sometimes it's cool uh, so you know why not some put some bing to it uh, and uh, yeah so I just wanted to mention that. So I'm going to install the graphics card now. Uh, the graphics card is installed obviously you just have to remove these PCA things there and this is what it looks like in the bottom. Uh, and it fitted beautifully. There's no issues here. Uh, so this is going to be intake, and then you have two PC, uh, eight, excuse me, eight pin power. Yeah, eight pin power supply, which came coming from the cold store. I recommending always use to use two separate uh, cables for each. Uh, I mean, there is a big issue. Some people say you can just use one. Some people can use two. Uh, but it's better to use two, in my opinion, because it's uh. It's just uh, you're just pulling from the power supply. Uh, each one would be more divided, so I th I believe you're not gonna drain the power supply too much and and keep that cool. Now the the front panel and the USB 2.0 that are connected. Now I just I can just install this, so it makes it easier. Uh, and uh, it's. it's uh, yeah, so let me install this next and then put all the put it back together So one thing to caution uh, this is just the one screw here 
and you also want to just do the one screw here you want to leave this for the for this uh here because actually if the four screws overlaps here so just something to be mindful of you don't want to screw this one in but if you do by mistake you'll figure that out after when you try to put this back another thing is when you're putting the the rear case uh in that's opposite to the graphics card just make sure you put through your power supply uh, through the bottom there because otherwise if you forget to do that you're gonna have to take it out everything apart so just want to mention that uh, that's the power supply cable that gets connected to this uh, so just just be, just be mindful of that you want to note, note that when you're putting it back in it's like a lego so you don't have to use a lot of force but if it's not going in properly it just means you're not um, you know positioning it correctly so just make sure you put it in so that it just fits in nicely uh, you don't need to use force because if you 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 can you could you know break like you know scratch something screw up your power cable i don't know but just something to be aware of the bottom uh so i'm gonna end up with these four screws that are a, a little bit longer than the other ones that's how you know uh, you can't really go wrong so just uh you need a little bit of patience uh the point is that if you screw anything that you shouldn't it won't let you obviously screw these last four screws there so don't don't be worried about that too much. Uh, so let me screw this thing on and and uh, I'm gonna turn it back on and run the Xenobench and firmware. Be right back. Okay, moment of truth. Uh, it didn't turn on for some reason. Uh, I don't know if the graphics card is faulty. So I just this is Nvidia. Maybe we don't have the Nvidia drivers. Um, so I just put in an RX four hundred and sixty, which I had uh, lying around, uh, and it should work because it's a Radeon um, X X five seventy. So hopefully that works. Uh, I'll be right back. So uh, I just turned it on. Uh, so typically, uh, you know, uh, you're going to run into this situation. It could be the power supply. There's not enough power to power this because it's recommended like 750 and I have a 600 watts. Uh, but with the radiant cards shutting on and off as well. So I don't know what the problem is. Uh, maybe it's a driver issue. If this is a radium card, it should default and work. So maybe I should just give it a few minutes. Be right back. Okay, so I tried the graphics card and it's not that, it's still uh, turning on and off. Uh, so I'm, I'm thinking it's probably the RAM, most likely the RAM. So I'm gonna change the RAM. Okay, uh, so it's Turning on now, uh, and uh, yeah, it's actually working now. So definitely the RAM was loose. Um, so I'm gonna put back the 2080 Ti, and then I'm gonna run some tests. So definitely it was the RAM.